Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Coley, the awards editor at Rotten Tomatoes, where the film you just watched is still certified fresh at 92%. Just gonna put that out there. Uh, please allow me to welcome to the stage um, some of the cast from the incredible film you just watched. First, we have actor Mamadou Athey. We have actor Jeremy Keller. And producer actor Mr. Jim Collins. After that welcome, I just hope I can live up to it a little bit. <laughs> oh, come on, you got it. I'm trying. And I'm you trying. look great. Too. Oh, thank you. That cream is hit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> winter, winter cream. Oh, my gosh. You know what I'm saying? I look down, I say, okay, winter cream. That's a new color. Oh, my winter gosh. Cream. Um, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Jamie Fox, I'm so glad you're here. Like, let me be honest. I'm so, I'm glad, so glad that you came here to talk about this film to be here in this moment, because even when I got to speak to Journey and Maggie back in October when the film was uh, having its initial release, they just talked about how much they wanted to get you back out here yeah. to talk about this film. And just recently, when you accepted the award at the Critics' Choice Awards for all of your incredible achievements this year. Your dress was not playing the movie. I know. <laughs> and Journey. You know, I mean, did you hear about that? No, tell me Man, more. Your, hey, it was like, <laughs> in the dress, yeah. it was, it was killing. <laughs> Do no, not your speech. Play. Your, your speech. speech. I just want you to talk I know about the it. dress. <laughs> Winter cream, devilish red. Ah! You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, Maine. You know, know what I'm saying? Maine came in there and not playing. And, and your performance. See, so we have actors out here. Look, this is, this right here is not to be played with. She was amazing. She was so amazing. And I, I, I think if, if, if you would, you should do a tutelage because she was so sneaky with the way we prepared for this. And when we were preparing, she was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, minimal. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I, I said, I might have a nice, you know, off day at the office. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have a cool day. When we got on set, I was like, who in the fuck is this? <laughs> she had so, and I call it, I don't, and I'll just speak, and I don't know if this is your process. But I call it Bibles. Like when we come to work as actors, we have our text, and then we have our subtext, which is our Bible, which is this is what this is what I really want to make sure that I get across. And at one point, we were doing. I'm gonna be honest with you. We would the scene when we're at dinner. She is whooping my ass up and down the corridors of that place. And at one point, <laughs> they said, "Cut." Datari said. Are you okay? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, she's killing. So, so, but, but I say that because in our business, we're in the business of make believe, right? What makes what makes us great is the lack of fear and confidence. What shakes us sometimes is the person that's across from you. When she was in in her element, you could tell that she was prepared, she had the subtext, she had the Bible, and it elevated the whole film. And you saw that. You ele because, and then, and, and you know, when you lean into him, you say, I'm going to be on your ass. Whatever, whatever he said, the way she delivered that, I said, oh, that's it. And we would talk, maybe, I don't know if you were privy to this, but we would talk about, it. I said, that's what needs, that's the important part, is someone to challenge Willie Gary in a way to get him off of his game because as we go on the, uh, the, the journey of the story, you feel it. So I'm just letting you know. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I was gonna get him to brag on you later in my questions, but we just got that oh, one. Oh, no, no, that was great. Somebody take that so I can like rewind that. Yeah, that's right. right. so They got it all recorded. It's gonna be on YouTube this afternoon. Yeah, I'll send that to Yes. Five on MySpace, right there. <laughs> Um, because young folk be TikTok, Instagram, I'll be like MySpace, I'll be on Black Planet, like my own shit, huh? I remember Black Planet. Um, I do want to talk about, though, 
If we can get here, hold on. I want to make sure we talk about what you did. <laughs> I want to talk about what you got to do with Willie because I do feel it is more than you are embodying this man. Willie is fast talking. You don't know what you're getting with him, but you gave him a level of humanity that I think really sort of set this apart because look, this could have gone a very different way if it wasn't for that. Can you talk about as both a producer and an actor how you not only wanted to show who this man was in this moment, but still give him a level of humanity throughout the entire course of it. So where he wasn't just a caricature. This was a man where I felt we knew him as a person. Well, you have to credit Maggie as well. Yeah. You have to credit Maggie for that because Maggie would let us run and then she said, I, I don't want to stay over here. I, I, I. So, you know, you know me, I'm just, you can tell, I'm just, I'm just shit, Adderall out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's cocaine. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. I hate cocaine. I just like how it smells. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a good joke, all right? I have so many cocaine jokes. Hey, I think this is spoiler. You want to try it? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That is old Hollywood. We don't do that anymore. We are all gluten-free. Hyperallergenic. It is all nice now. We don't do any of that shit. Hollywood has cleaned itself up, and every day I try to do the best I can to continue to clean it up. <laughs> but as you can tell, I you know I run, I run, and when we had done so much with the Bible, I actually got a chance. I had said I got to meet Willie, so I went to meet Willie, and it was it was like seeing an old lion who had so many uh, great stories and so many great battles. If you know the history of a lion, you know, they don't live long. You know, like when you see an actual lion in the wild is maybe 11 years, but they have many, many battles. And so you can tell him and his crew are still hanging, still trying to tell their jokes. You know what I'm saying? Jokes was not as funny as it probably used to be back in the day. But he had this great spirit about him of that, I, I want I want the story told, but he wasn't he wasn't um he wasn't precious with it. You know he wasn't he's like you don't have to make me look a certain way. He just he just wanted me to know that at that time that was really unheard of an African American whole African American team with this white man at this time it just doesn't happen. And he said and in our ranks it it's it's a little more in your face. Uh, behind those closed doors so we had a lot of hurdles to get over but it was great man and then to see him you know in his elevator uh, uh, let's, let's let's go to lunch or dinner or something lunch and he's in his uh, uh rolls royce <laughs> and you know and willie's a little you know he's seasoned i don't i don't say old he's seasoned um but he's gonna drive himself you know to the to the lunch so we following him in his you know his rolls royce and all of a sudden, he stops his light, and his trunk opens. <laughs> Just for no reason, he's like, God damn it, I hit the wrong. <laughs> you know how you get that new shit? He got the new car, don't really know what all that shit does. He, so he hit a button, I think he was trying to hit his blinker. And hit that shit, and his whole trunk popped off. He said, shit, I don't know what. And I was like, Willie, it's a button. He said, oh, okay. And the shit went down by itself. He said, ooh, that's magical. <laughs> I'm glad you gave him the Rolls Royce list. Yeah, you know, because if you ain't ever, you know, you ever rent a car. Yeah. I've rented, that's the only reason I know. I rented a Rolls Royce one time. But I had never been in a Rolls Royce. So when you get to the gas station, that's when you can tell the person who actually owns a Rolls Royce. You don't know where the gas tank is. You're hitting all kinds of shit, blinkers. Is, you know what I'm saying? So, so I've, I've been in a few Rolls Royces. I think that. So I can help him. But the thing was, was that to be able to, to, to touch him, to be able to feel his spirit and his, the way his wife spoke about him was amazing. And I, and I would... Look, if you're really about the acting, you try not to be selfish with your Bible. 
If you find something along the way that you can pass on, pass that spirit on. I passed the spirit of his wife on to, to Meg. I said, hey, the wife, the wife is there. You know what I mean? So, so when, we're, when, we're, when we're crafting this, we have to make sure that she anchors, she anchors him because he really leaned on her. Like I said, behind every good man is a great agent. <laughs> no, the women was like, mm -hmm, I, I fucked your ass up, did it? People's cameras are shaking and shit. That ain't how that shit go. No, behind every good man is a great woman. And we wanted to make sure that that went through. Um, there was a woman behind him, but as you've already pointed out, there was also a woman across from him. And yes, from, I will go ahead and say, your entrance into this film will go down in history as one of the greats. Because yes. the minute I saw her heel, I was like, she gonna get in his behind. <laughs> but coming into that moment, it's not just that. I mean, there's moments and lines in this that I felt your influence, I felt Maggie's influence. And I know this idea of black women maybe not being the leads in this, but being the driving force in this was something that sort of beat throughout this. I would love for you to talk about why this black woman in particular was so special to play on this set in this moment. I mean, she's literally the smartest woman in the room, even when she's getting beat up. Um, how was that for you to play that after, I don't know how many credits, hundreds so at this point? <laughs> I mean, it was a dream, you know, for one, being able to play in the sandbox with someone who I've admired my entire life. I mean, an acting god right here, you know? And, and for me, you know, it's like, these, these kind of roles are few and far between for, for someone like me. And it was actually Maggie who, um, she called, she emailed me and was like, all right, read this script. Uh, it was COVID, 2020. And she was like, read the script, but pay attention to this character. It's a man, but think of it as a man-eating woman who just dominates everybody. And um, I read and was like, wait, so let me get this straight. You'd be willing to make this character a woman? Because in real life, it was a man. Um, and she was like, yeah, I just think it would be something interesting to, to place a woman and that dynamic of like this tennis match with them, you know, it just it just would shape, shift, shift the dynamic. And then she was like, and Jamie Foxx is gonna be Willie. I was like, shut the front door right now. Where do I sign up? I, who do I have to pay? You know, um, and really Maggie and I just kind of workshop the character a lot. It, it was not at all <laughs> like, you know, most of those scenes that are actually in the film, except for the courtroom scenes, most of those were, you know, new additions. Um, and yeah, you know, I think one of the things we talked about, okay, so I don't work in stereotypes. I work with archetypes. Mm -hmm. And for me, yes, the Bible, the biography, creating, you know, everything about her um, and knowing everything about her, like Denzel says, you gotta know what kind of sheets they sleep on, mm. right? Um, <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> you gotta know what kind of sheets. All right. What kind of breakfast they, you know? <laughs> Eat something else, Eddie D. Yeah. All right, so you gotta know what kind of sheets. She sleeps on boom. There you go. All right. <laughs> My knees, silent night. <laughs> Journey. Journey. Yeah, so you know. Uh, by the way, this was this was every day. You know, uh, which was also amazing because, by the way, we did not rehearse. Like the very first day, um, for me, I show up on set. Cameras are already up. No rehearsal. They're like, oh yeah, Willie's coming in. Willie comes in with his music blasting. Like, it was so amazing to work with him because it was like taking a master class. Honestly, for me, I was like, okay, we gonna be method. Like, we gonna be on the other side of the aisle and like, it's about to be a battle. He comes in, the first thing he does was journey and he like gives me a huge hug and created such an environment of safety. 
for all of us, you know, for us to just play, for us to fail big, for us to try. And I have to say, you know, I'm, I'm veering off, I'll come back to me. But I have to say, it came from the top down, you know, like the fact that, that he's, he created an environment of, of, of just like generosity. One of the most generous actors I've ever worked with, and I was not expecting that. From someone like him who's like... Did you expect? <laughs> I mean, I was expecting other things. <laughs> no eye contact, please. Let everybody know that. No eye contact. Look up or down when you walk past me. Don't fuck around. <laughs> Have you glaring at my redness? I don't play that shit. No, but you don't. We were talking backstage. There was a moment, I just have to say, and I'm gonna keep everybody's name out of it, but there was a moment where one of the crew members um, wasn't pleasant, was a bit disrespectful. Was a actor? I'm just joking. You just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it. Okay, so there was a person who was not, who wasn't behaving properly. And we were in the middle of a take and Jamie stopped the take and he said, uh-uh. And he gave a whole speech to the entire crew. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like this from someone at his caliber, where he literally stopped the take and gave a speech about how we will maintain respect, we will maintain integrity, we will treat everybody from number 100 to number one the same. And it blew my mind because he didn't have to do it. But again, by doing that, it created an environment for us to feel safe to create this. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for that. Um, as a producer and an actor, and honestly, just as someone that got to watch the product, thank you all for this. It's incredible. Um, Mama Do, sir, I will say this. Um, yeah. I. I became more familiar with your work by the other feature that was produced by Tatari on Court. And I've seen you work with folks like Elizabeth Olsen on movies like Jurassic World. But I will say, I think of everything I've seen that you've done, this had to be the hardest in so many ways because your character not only opens the door to this possibility, you're the one that first says, hey, I think you should do this. This is the way to approach this. But then you also had to play, I hate to say, a calming and straightforward voice in, let's be real, what we've just witnessed over the past 10 minutes, just a lot of big, big, big. Talk about, in the best way possible, I'm just saying. He had a hard job to keep it straight. Don't do this to me! <laughs> it's on camera. I know. Hey. Big in, the best, right there. big in the best way brings home awards, as I like to say. Um, but sir, in that moment, you have a really hard job. You keep so much of this narrative grounded and you have to do it against these two very big sort of tennis matches. You've got Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer going next to you and you have to essentially play like the lion judge. How is that as an acting assignment really sort of not only keeping this character grounded, but also, again, giving him those moments of humor, giving him those moments of checking these two, as it were. Um, what was that like for you to keep that balance? <laughs> well, um, it was interesting. I mean, honestly, look, I hesitate because the answer is actually quite boring. Um, it's, I have, it's, this, it's basically what both of these two have just said. You have a script, and if you really invest in it, take it seriously. I mean, Hal Dawkins is a real guy. Mm -hmm. And I, I, the only other time, I, I can't believe they cast from the Grand Master Flash, but they did, they did. <laughs> um, and <What? laughs> it was crazy. But when you're playing someone who's, who's a, a, whether they're alive or dead, there's a real person, you, have, you owe them a kind of dignity, mm -hmm. and you have to do as much work as you can. It's, you have to, yeah. otherwise you're disrespecting them. Yeah. And that, like we were just talking about, I have an allergy to disrespect. Mm -hmm. I don't care who it is. So anyway, um, that kind of thing is really important to me. I really respect that guy. And there was, there was, a, there was, a, there was a way that how could it be, oh, gee golly, you know. Yeah. But I was like, oh, we're not going to do that. This is a grown man. Yeah. He's black. He's educated. He's intelligent. And he respects himself. Mm -hmm. So everything else is just I'm like, OK, I know who he is. Mm -hmm. I have the lines. 
I know who I am as an actor, just fulfill it. Wow. You make it sound simple, but it is simple. Um, he says it's simple, but we marvel at him. Yeah. And, 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 and look, we will have these sort of uh, robust personalities, but when you look at the set and you, you see the real work, you see the real actor, the real chops, it, it, uh, it calms you. And, and, and there, when, as you said, that, that situation, the situation came out of his face. There was a situation where it's like, hey man, we have this great opportunity to play make-believe and get paid a lot of money. There is actually no reason for anybody to be disrespectful. This is a charmed, beautiful um, um, uh, playground that we get a chance to play in. And I, I, during that time, I said, I'll let the moment go by and we'll just all sort of turn away and it is what it is. And I looked at his face and he said, and I said, no, he, he doesn't deserve it. I don't give, I mean, I'll take whatever the fuck. I've been through some shit. But, <laughs> but this young man right here is really deserving of a calm, nurturing set. Because when they say action, in between action and cut, he was magical every time. Um, Jeremy, I want to say this because I think it's a great acting exercise. You talk about the Bible of the script. Well, your Bible of your script, you had so many iconic lines. Like, those are the ones you, like, highlight as an actor. You're like, that's a read. That's a moment. But you have to embrace, I think, your, your inner it girl. You have to embrace your inner, like, uh, yes. Yeah, you have to just embrace, the, like, yeah, like your inner Beyonce alien superstar. And I'm curious, what was your acting method to sort of call her up after those moments? Because you know those are the moments like where she's really giving it to him. And you have to, because it's, I think it's hard sometimes to feel it. Like you never know, you could have had a bad morning that day. What did you do to sort of harness uh, who she was? Because she never lets go of that throughout this. You know, honestly, and that's like people who know me, that's actually not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's a lot of ways in Maine that I kind of found this extra strength, if I if I could say. Um, you know, I think for me, I, I in creating the Bible, in creating her story, she came from, she's a girl from Compton, who goes to Howard and then goes to Harvard. And so for me, I went back and read Michelle Obama's biography, autobiography, Becoming, because she talked about going from the south side of Chicago to Princeton to Harvard and the isolation and the loneliness that she felt in feeling like I'm one of the only black girls on campus and yet I've earned my place here and how society will make you feel you do not deserve to be where you are. And you're like, but my work speaks for itself. And so, honestly, the spirit of uh, Michelle Obama, of Sean Chapman Holly, of Marsha Clark, of these women who would have been Maine's peers, right? I honestly drew a lot of strength from them. And yeah, I did listen to a lot of Beyonce and Rihanna. Um, you know, in between takes. Um, I also do animal work, so it's a lot of weird things that I, I pull What's from. Animal? What's the animal? I There's a bunch of actors in here. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's weird. It's no, but which animal? I know about animal work. Like, so which was the animal that you used to like? I can't say. Okay. Uh, That's a secret for another you day. You want to know my animal? I do, though. <laughs> I do? No, uh, I want to bring it back. <laughs> I'm a rat. No. No, but you know, Jamie taught So, it's funny. I'll give you a hint. Where's the cheese at, baby? No, no, no. But he talked about, like, you know, one of the archetypes I worked with was the trickster. And so when he talked about like, okay, I was one way and then when, we, when the cameras would roll, to me, I was like, yo, I know he's gonna improvise. I know, like I went and watched every single thing of his before we shot. And I was like, he improvised, God, I know. Like, but I have to improvise as a, as a litigator. Like I can't, you know, and so for me, it was working with the trickster archetype of like, you know, they're highly intelligent, but who they are on the outside is not who they actually are on the inside. Um, and so, yeah, it was just about wearing that mask. I love it. Um, 
Mr. Jamie Foxx, sir, you, this has been the most entertaining Q&A I will ever do in my entire life. Thank you so much. Um, it's a lot of great Q&As. It's a lot of great Q&As. It's a lot of great Q&As. I love this Q&A. I, mean, I think you're reading my mind because I was... It's a lot of great people on both sides. It's a lot of great people on both sides. It's a lot of great Q&As. I love her Q&As. I have a lot of great black and white Q&As, but I love the black q &A. Look, there's a black, there's another black. There's another black. Oh, it's a Puerto Rican. Same thing. I love it. Don't you love it when he just picks out like There's a black. There's another black. And that's a, oh, that's a Mexican. Same thing. Um, excuse me. Um, I was going to ask. Fall, but I don't know, stop. Um, wait a minute. The, the thing I was going to say is your history with comedy and your impressions makes you a very present. No, no, you're not. Stop. You're history with comedy. Stop. Your history. Your history with comedy and impressions makes you somebody that is very adaptable on set and definitely able to sort of like live in the moment. Can you talk about one of those great moments that you guys had on set where you lived in the moment and y'all got a great product on screen? I think I think I'll go back to when we first sat down and we had the 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 bar scene. I I I'll tell you, um, there's only been another one other person that has shut me down. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you can you can tell you can tell I was fucked up. I was like, ooh, she is, ooh, she killing. Me. Uh, it's only been one other person that shut me down. Like seriously, it's two 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 actors who happen to be actors that shut me down. She shut me down, and a young lady by the name of Viola Davis. Shut me down. Yeah. Viola shut me down in uh, in uh, uh, Law Abiding Citizen, and it was I could tell in my mind I was losing <laughs> in the scene, but I was like, oh, maybe you know, I'm Jamie Foxx. I'm just Jamie Foxx and shit. <laughs> and F. Gary Gray said, "Cut!" And he came over to me, uh, Jay Fees. I said, "What's up? She's killing." <laughs> I said, "Word, yeah, it's, 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 it's bad." <laughs> I said, like, what, what, "What you mean?" I don't know. She just, she's killing. I said, you, can I, is there anything I can do? He said, at this point, no. I said, well, F, what should I do? He says, you know, okay, J. Uh, facial expressions. Just do facial expressions. So the rest of the scene, I'm. And she's whooping my motherfucking <laughs> And the same, I felt the same. It was like post-traumatic. When you started your thing, and I said, oh, God, she is murdering me. And it, it's a testament to the Bible. It's a testament to that, um, um, that unspoken sort of competition that we do have. But I believe that competition elevates, you know, the scene. Uh, and so when you see that, there's a lot going on uh, with that and I just you know uh, it's I don't know if you I don't know if anybody will get this reference Sugar Ray Leonard was 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 an amazing fighter if he was an actor he's ad-libbing Roberto Duran wasn't playing that shit and all this and then Roberto Duran would just go <laughs> right here and you see, you know, so Sugar, I was like, oh, will you watch that like that? And Roberto Duran would grab Sugar Ray Leonard like this and say something in Spanish in his ear. <laughs> Whatever he'd say. <laughs> and you see Sugar Ray, he lost. He actually never beat Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran, Roberto Duran stopped. So your Roberto Duran was when we're I'm and then you said and I went uh -oh. <laughs> she is not playing. Yeah. So um, uh, again, I, I will keep going back to that because it really is for all of us who are in this acting community. It's it's something that uh, and I hope they'll release 
some behind the scenes of it and show the process because she was she was not she was on her on her thing. It was ten minute takes and it was and I was losing. All right, Amazon, let's make this happen. I want to see that. Um, Mr. Mobley, sir, I'm going to give you the last quick word, and I'm going to remind everyone, unfortunately, they have to go run to another Q&A, so I'm going to ask all of you to please keep your seat. I'm sorry. It's, uh, and uh, it's so great. This is why I did this now. Um, but before we get out of here, sir, Mr. Mamadou, I wanted you to talk about a little bit about what Maggie did on set, because I know that it was a different set from top to bottom, both in the environment that she fostered, but also as a writer-director, still the freedom that she gave you. Some writer-directors become very precious about what they've written, but I know that she allowed a lot of freedom within the actors on set, and that allowed this to feel so um, free and so so authentic. If you could talk about that. Yeah, I'd love to, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, Maggie, from the beginning, from the very, very beginning, um, was just very open, extraordinarily open. I mean, I've, I've been fortunate. I've been very, I've been, I've been very fortunate in the ten years I've been acting professionally to meet people that, again, have. I, I can only work with people that respect me. I don't care where I am in my career. I, I can't do it if you don't respect me. I'm not a prop. Um, so. Um, and Maggie want, like made it clear that she wanted me to be in this movie. And we collaborated, we talked about the character, we spoke about it for months before we got on set. I mean, not every day, but like, you know, in, in meaningful conversations. To the point when we got on set, it was just like I had a familiarity with her, I trusted her, I knew she had my best interests in mind. Um, and that was felt throughout the set. Um, I, I just, it doesn't really get better. You don't really need to do much as a director, but really listen and be open. Obviously, have a point of view. I need to some of these dudes. But, uh, you know, <laughs> what's going on? But, but really, a rectorization. <laughs> but, uh, but also, you know, this, this is something I just, this is not quite about Maggie, but I just have to say those courtroom scenes. I remember Jamie would come in. And you'd bring that boombox, yeah. and you just make it so. Those courtroom scenes, you guys know, yeah. brutal sometimes. It's like, oh, I gotta do coverage. Boom, it, just got, it's, it was so much more fun, thanks to you know just creating that atmosphere, and it, it's meaningful, especially when you're doing that for two weeks straight. Well, man, hey, listen. All I can tell you is that that you made you made me care. You know, we can live in this we can live in this business, and I can. Uh, uh, look at the byproducts of my work and just be caught up in that, be where, but you make us care. You make us care about what this is. You, you, you put a value on, on the work. And you can, as you can see, when he speaks, he, he really means that. And that, you need that. I, I need that anchor. I, you know, we all need that, that anchor like, hey, wait a minute. Let's pay attention to uh, this, this young man who's who's really taking it personal and wanting to do the best. So we have to, you have to bring, you have to, to me, it's, it is about setting that sort of environment so you can, so you can work, you know, because, you know, our, our business, think about this, millions of people come, will come to this city and there's two words I live by, action and cut. <laughs> Nothing else matters except action and cut. In between those two words, you do the best you can. You do everything that you can to make sure that you, one, show how, how much work you put in, and also it's, it's the respect of every person that's come here that wants to be in that moment of action uh, and cut at the highest level. So watching um, you, watching you, and just going like, wow, you know, they are, they are really, at, at the at the top of what we seek in this business of of hard work, uh, discipline, and at the same time can just go. I mean, you guys were just uh, going, and at the same time, Mag Maggie, could you please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't work like this. I said no eye contact and no goddamn phones. Take your medication. I guess that's just for you. Is that, is that for me? I do that. I got a little medication. That... 
Like fucking Bill go up and scare the shit out of you. Oh shit, I gotta take my shit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The other part of it is the Maggie of it all. All women head of the departments. She taught me that. All head of the de departments. And to be honest with you, it was so smooth. Yeah. It was so good. There was no, nothing against the dudes, <laughs> but the dudes can just make it about so much other shit that has <laughs> nothing to do with action and cut. And that's what I think we've suffered from for a long time. They make you try to, yeah, it's a long time. Nothing against it. I think the guys are incredible. They're, they're amazing. But sometimes they make it about something that has nothing to do. See, I've, I've come through the fire. I've come through some situations where the person at the helm is a tough motherfucker. And so you got to wade through all that shit just to get to action and cut because it's a lot of shit over here that has nothing to do with none of this shit man i don't give a fuck about this man say action and i'm getting ready to rock shit you know but they make you start thinking about some other shit next thing you know i'm mad you know what i'm saying doing act doing my saying action i will be mad but the reason that that is wonderful having maggie at the helm and it's so seamless you know, it wasn't like you came and planted a, a woman's flag. You know, it was just seamless and it was just amazing. And uh, I, I, I hope that that came through um, uh, uh, in the movie. But know that that's that's how it, that's how it went down. And I know um, when we when we are working on a movie, you don't know how good or bad it's going to be. You know, you just have to put your trust into the director, into the editors, my man Datari over here, who's you, who's our, our our producer, and producing is like some Obi Wan Kenobi, you know, Jedi shit. Like, how do you? And he has that incredible golden touch to be able to know, you know, what to put together and how to put it together and have this. Uh, because I say all the time, my hunches are not like they used to be. You know what I'm saying? You, know, you get older, you know, your hunches be off. And I'll say some shit, and they'll be like, hey, why don't you just do this? And I said, now my execution, I feel like I, I got I got that sort of under control. But the, the, the hunches, not so much. So therefore, Datari, thank you so much. Maggie, thank you so much. And then thank you guys so much for uh, um, I want to remind everyone you can vote for this incredible cast and the burial in all categories. I want to thank you for watching and I want to thank our incredible panel. If you guys could keep your seats while they exit, I would much appreciate it. Thank you all very much.